Hello everyone! In this video series, we'll look at how to create a Metasploit downloader payload and how it works. We'll deep dive into the assembly code, fully reverse engineer it, and in the end, discuss hiding options and detection evasion. We'll also play a bit with Defender Antivirus. We will start in this video with the payload generation part. And for this, we'll use MSF Venom. In case you haven't used this tool before, there are a few options which are important to know. For example, minus minus list payloads. This will allow us to view all the payloads and choose the one we want to use. Let's go with a Windows payload that downloads and executes a file. Payloads are sorted alphabetically, so we locate quickly the one we want to use, Windows slash download exec. We also need to be aware that there are a lot of output formats supported by Metasploit. So although we will use the exe format in this, these videos, there are others. For example, JAR, GSP, MSI, VBA, and so on. Lots of formats to pack our shellcode. All of these have their own utility. Okay, so once we've chosen the payload, we'll specify it with minus P and then we'll use Windows slash download exec. We also said we will use exe format for the x86 architecture. Straightforward. We'll see later why, but notice that there are others available as well. And we will use, let's say, download exec.exe as the output name. If we use the command like this, it will generate a default file with the default options. Actually, there is a grammar typo here. Let's see how to customize the options for this download exec payload. To see which ones are available, use minus minus list options. In our case, the most important options that we probably want to specify are the URL where the file will be downloaded from and the exe name, which is the name of the file dropped on the target. Okay, so let's set the name of the payload downloaded as SVC crypt post.exe. An attempt to disguise the file with a name similar to svchost.exe. And we will use a URL that also can pass as a legitimate domain name because of the similarity with a well-known Microsoft CDN. Another trick, use an inocos name for the resource to be downloaded, for example, GS. Okay, now we have the payload. Next, we will copy the payload over to a Windows virtual machine and analyze it. Uh, 
Let's see. Refresh the shared folder. We have the payload here. In order to see the payload activities, since this is a downloader, we will use a tool called FakeNet. We've actually used it in previous videos many times. FakeNet will intercept the HTTP request and serve a default executable file. Start it without any option, and it will create by default a listener for a lot of protocols, including HTTPS, used by our payload. Notice there were some requests already. Let's start the payload and see what happens. As expected, there is a request towards a GS resource on the domain we've specified. As a result, we have an .exe file downloaded. Of course, we cannot run it because in this case, FakeNet served the default HTTP file, not an actual .exe. So, because the requested file had a GS extension, FakeNet served a default text file. See that the file is also hidden. Notice the exclamation mark here. We could also use a tool like a process monitor, which will intercept the activities. In this case, to see the activities of this executable named download exec, we'll use the process name filter. Process name filter here. Let's delete the previous one. So, we have some activities here, but no payload was downloaded. Why do you think is that? If you paid attention, you probably noticed that I've closed the FakeNet listener, so I have to start it again. Go to Tools, FakeNet. Clear the Process Monitor screen using this button over here. Run the payload again. And in this case, we have the executable here. In Process Monitor, we can search for events containing a specific name using the search function find, Control F. Let's say crypt host. And we can see that the file was created. The file was written and it has a length of uh, 768 bytes. Then we have some TCP activity. We have this 192.0.2.123, which is the address of the interface generated by FakeNet. Then we have the HTTPS protocol. We have write file, file, as expected, close file, and so on. So to recap, in this first video, we've seen how to generate a downloader payload using MSF Venom. And we've seen how it works on Windows and how to intercept the request using FakeNet. In the next parts, we'll deep dive into the Metasploit generated executable using IDA Pro and other tools. Thank you very much for your time and see you in the next video. Cheers!